Good morning and welcome to this daily devotional today. As we continue to study through the high priestly prayer, as it's called, of Jesus, as he's praying for us, he's praying for the global church that is to come for for thousands of years until now, uh, we're going to hear what Jesus has to pray for us, what he asks the Father on our behalf. Before we jump in, let's first have a time of prayer and a time of confession to get our hearts right. Let's pray. Lord God, we pray that you would open our hearts to your word. Let us hear your voice this morning. Let us know you deeper and understand what your heart is for us, who you want us to be and how you want us to be. Lord, we lift up our sins and our failings to you now, asking your forgiveness. Lord, we praise you that we find forgiveness for our sins and that we, in Christ, can be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Lord, help us and guide us in this study today. We pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Well, welcome and so glad to have you each with us today. Um, As we study in John chapter 17, starting in verse 20, we're going to finish out Jesus' high priestly prayer. He is our high priest. He is the one interceding with the Lord uh, in heaven for us on our behalf. Let me read through the passage, and then we will walk our way through it. John chapter 17, verse 20. I pray not only for these, but also for, speaking of the disciples, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. If you believe because of the Bible, you are these people. Who will believe in me through their word. May they all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. I am in them, and you are in me, so that they may be made completely one, that the world may know you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me." Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, so that they will see my glory, which you have given me because you love me, before the world's foundation. Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you, and they um, have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them, and they will continue to make it known, so that the love you have loved me with may be in them, and I may be in them. All right, so let's break down what he's praying for us. First off, note, as I said, he is praying for us, very literally, because we have believed in the disciples' testimony. The Gospels All of the New Testament is basically written by the apostles or people who knew the apostles. People who are writing down what the apostles saw and heard and felt. Verses 20 through 21. May they be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us. So he's praying for unity. But not just any unity, not just any kind of fuzzy unity that you want it to be, but he wants us to have a unity like the Father and the Son have. So just as the Trinity is knit together, we as brothers and sisters in Christ are to be knit together. We should not be known for our divisions and our differences. We should be known for our unity. 
Now, that's not to say that we should all just throw up our hands and, and just agree with each other on everything, but let's look at this. We should have similar purpose. Are we all unified in purpose of proclaiming the gospel? That Jesus Christ died for all of human, humankind and that we, uh, through confession and faith, we uh, are forgiven of our sins. Are we unified in love, right? Um, are we knit together? Do we have a genuine concern for each other? Do we uh, sacrificially give in order to help each other? Or are we selfish and self-serving and self-seeking? And finally, submission. Uh, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they submit to one another for common cause. They're seeking to promote the mission. They're seeking to promote each other over themselves. We see this with Jesus. He very clearly submitted in order to, to accomplish what the Trinity was seeking to do, what God overall was seeking to do. He constantly pointed people to the Father. But the Holy Spirit does the very same thing, promotes Christ and teaches us Christ. So in the same way, we need to submit to each other. It's not about making my name great. It's not about you making your name great. It's about making Christ's name great. It's about us working together in harmony. Now, once again, that doesn't mean the doctrinal distinctions. That means doesn't mean that the doctrinal disagreements suddenly become meaningless. It's rather that we um, seek wherever possible to work together in harmony. So often you have uh, groups that don't have any doctrinal differences necessarily, but yet they just won't work together. They fight amongst each other, and that's not how it ought to be. All right, uh, verse 22. I have given them the glory you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. So how, how can we be unified? How can we be this one that we need to be? Jesus says, in order to accomplish this, he has given us the glory that the Father gave Jesus. What glory did he give Jesus? He gave Jesus the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what worked, uh, is, is who worked the miracles that Jesus did. Jesus didn't do any miracles. The Holy Spirit did miracles through Jesus. In addition to that, uh, we have the power of prayer at our disposal. Jesus is interceding on our behalf. The Holy Spirit is praying for us, correcting our prayers as needed, and uh, giving power to our prayers. And the, uh, the Puritans uh, used to call this, uh, this thing called unction, and even in the 1800s and such, it's like it's like preaching, but with like power, you know, like th that that something that when somebody's speaking, you you really hang on their word because what they're saying is powerful and what they're saying has is great meaning. Uh, we have this unction. There's something different about us. People can't put a finger on it. They can't exactly say what it is, but. Jesus has given us these things, these tools, this glory. And we see this throughout the world where Christians, even when people don't like us, they hold us in high regard because of the good works and the power that is found in Christianity in the faith. He gives us this so that we can be one. As we have successes and joys, we can be unified in those uh, in that. Verses 23 through 24. He, he says that he is in us so that the world may know. He's in us to work out this testimony. Uh, he's at work in us uh, to, to show the world the truth of what this testimony that we have is. He says, verse 23, I am in them and you are and you are in me, so that they may be made completely one, that the world may know you, 
have sent me and have loved them as you love me so that the world may know that the Father loves us. And you just keep hearing that over and over and over again. He says, so that they may be one. The unity of us all, us getting along, us loving each other genuinely from the heart and sacrificially giving for each other is, is, is so near and dear to the heart of Jesus. God wants us to get along, not just nice, but he wants us to deeply love each other to, so that we welcome each other, that we're genuinely excited to see each other. Some, some professed Christians don't want to have anything to do with, other, with brothers and sisters in Christ. They're all hypocrites. I don't want to have anything to do with them. That is not a Christian attitude. That is not Christ's attitude. Christ wants us to, to, to want to go out of our way in order to spend time with each other so that we can be a blessing to each other. Not so that, oh, I don't like those people and I'm just going to go do my own thing. Hear the heart of Jesus that they may be one. Not once all those terrible people figure it out and get as righteous as me. No. Make yourself a servant. If you're so righteous, make yourself a servant so that you may serve others. And you know who you should serve the most? The people who need it the most. Yeah, the most prideful, the most arrogant, the most selfish people. Those are the people you should serve most because they need it the most. Right? Not the people that you get along with the best, but rather the people who are the most unlovable. Those are the people you should serve if you really have Christ's heart. Verses 25 through 26. It says, Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you. Jesus is saying, I know you. And they have known that you sent me. They know that the Father sent Jesus. We ought to know that, that the Father sent us, uh, sent Jesus. Jesus makes the Father known to us. We see that here in 26. I made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love you have loved me uh, with may be in them. How are we supposed to love each other? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus puts that love within us. We know God because Jesus makes him known, but we also, in that, we have this love that we need to have in order to love each other. Because, yeah, you walk into a church, you walk into a group of people that are following Jesus, and they are hypocrites. I'm a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites. Everyone needs to get off their high horse because there ain't no one perfect. The more perfect you think you are, the more arrogant you really are. We desperately need Jesus' love in order to love these unlovable people. We're all a work in progress, and really, if you all know knew each other, it would be really awfully hard to love each other. We need supernatural strength and love in order to love each other. But luckily, fortunately, providently, Jesus gives us that love so that we can love each other. Praise the Lord. We need it. So, how can you work to be more unified, more of one heart, one passion with other believers? How can you serve other believers more? Those are some thoughts that, uh, that you should take away. All right, folks, let me close this in prayer, a prayer of blessing for you, and uh, let you get to your day. Lord, I pray that you bless each person watching this video, that you fill them with your Holy Spirit, that they would submit themselves to you to do your will, that you would glorify your son Jesus, that as they go, Lord, that they would seek ways to 
be one with other believers, to truly love each other from the heart, to not try to find perfect Christians to hang out with, but rather to serve those who need help. Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thanks so much for being here and watching with us. Um, if you have some time, you want to check out some other Bible studies, there's some right here on the screen. Otherwise, I'll see you later. God bless you all.